to thrive in hard times. And the reason God is bringing us this subject is not just because of you. It's not about you. And I hope it's sinking. It's sinking. I hope it's sinking. It's not about you. God is not looking for how to feed you. Glory to Jesus. God is raising saviors. God is raising men and women that will feed multitudes. God is raising those who will preserve others. Just the same way he raised Joseph. Joseph was a preserver. Without Joseph, his entire family and entire race would have died of hunger. And not just that, the entire Egypt. So God raised him as a preserver. In the same way, God is raising men and women in this generation from his body. Before God goes out to look for people, we will have first of all start from inside. So God is, the Bible says his eyes run to and fro the earth. His eyes are running to and fro. So raise a generation of people that will serve as preservers of destiny. God wants to use you to preserve a generation. The question is, are you willing? Are you available? Do you even begin to see yourself in that light? Or as, are you still seeing yourself as the needy man or woman who needs help? Who is always looking for somebody to find me something? You see, there are some things you have to yank out deliberately for your vocabulary. Sometimes you have to force growth. Force growth. Deliberately tell yourself, I have gone beyond this stage and this phase, so I'm going to drop off some of these things, some of these words, some of this way I behave or I carry myself. I'm going to change it. Why? Because you are deliberately moving past where you are to the next level. If you keep operating with the same mindset, you will keep getting the same result. We all know that. But knowing it is not enough. Deliberately implementing changes that's what gets you the result, not what you know. If what you know is enough to change your life, professors will be the most changed human beings. Because they know so much. So accumulating knowledge, reading all the books is good. Keep reading. But in all your reading, desire to implement and apply. In all the knowledge you acquire and accumulate, application is necessary. What are you doing with the thing? Now, almost every one of us here, under the sound of my voice, you know enough for your life to be better. Are you listening? Yes, sir. Almost every one of us, under the sound of my voice, you know enough for your life to be better. But the question is, what is the issue? The question, the real issue is application. The real issue is application. Isaiah 119 says, if you are willing and obedient. Now, obedience is application. If you are willing and obedient, then you will eat the good of the land. But willingness alone does not deliver the good of the land to you. Because everyone is willing. Everyone is willing, for instance, to pass the exam. But not everyone passes it. Am I correct? Yeah. Some pass, some fail. And then levels change. You know that if you start, for instance, you enter school, GSS 1, you have some friends. By the time you get to SS1, most of those who will not be your friend. Yes, sir. Some of them have dropped. Yes, 
and then the status of relations will change. Maybe somebody that could just hit you on the back or buy offer, and then he hits you, turn back, just one look will tell him that we are not there anymore. I mean, SS1 now, you are still in GS2. And many times, people don't fail because they lack intelligence. People fail because they lack application. They don't apply themselves to read. They don't apply themselves to act, not intelligence. They have the intelligence, they have the know-how, but it's the application. So you are going to leave here this morning with the decision to be a doer of the world. The Bible says that the doers of the world are the ones that are blessed, not the hearers. The blessing comes to those who do, not just those who hear. Everyone hears, but not everyone walks in the blessing because not everyone applies themselves. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. So we've been looking at thriving in hard times. And we've established the fact that famine is, is not anything new. All through history, there have been various seasons of famine. Even the most blessed of men, I mean, Abraham had his own fair share. Isaac had his own fair share. All of them, including Joseph. But the distinguishing factor was that in the midst of it, they flourish, they prosper. Isaac, in particular, so prospered that a whole nation of people envied him. A whole nation of people envied him. And they chased him out because they said, they are, according to their confession, you have become bigger than us as a nation. In famine, when businesses were closing down, when businesses were closing down, are you ready for accusation? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, I'm not in the right. Am I in the right audience? Am I in the right audience? Yes, Are you ready for accusation? Yes, sir. You better begin to think accusation. Oh, yes. Some people are going to sell off their businesses. And God will put you in a position to acquire. Amen. And let me tell you something. Sometimes you don't need money to acquire. You just need common sense. Go and find out. Well, People who have even acquired multi-billion dollar businesses, some of them didn't have the money. I, I, there was a particular bank that acquired another bank that was bigger than itself. The bank it acquired was bigger. That bank didn't have the resources to acquire that bigger bank, but they acquired it. You see, if you are thinking small, number one, you won't see opportunities. Then number two, even when they come, you think it's not for you. Begin to look for who it is for. Begin to look for somebody else in your sector that you think is worth that opportunity. Maybe you're an MC, for instance, and they say there's an opening in Asura. Come and see something. Say, ah. I wish I have a Libabas number. I'll give him this opportunity. I know he can handle it. Begin to look for a Libabas number. That's why the rich keeps getting richer. The poor keeps getting poorer. You see, if opportunity does not meet preparation, when opportunity shows up, you are not prepared. It will make the individual look foolish. Whereas it is your responsibility to prepare before opportunity shows up. That's why you are 
you are you are admonished to keep preparing not for where you are but for where you are going. Otherwise, when the opportunity comes to thrust you there, you won't see, you think it's for someone else. God gives you an opportunity to make a million dollars. And you are not prepared mentally for it. Next, you begin to call pastor. Pastor, do you know anybody who can? I say, yes, yes, I can handle it. Oh, yes. A typical Igbo businessman. There is no business on earth he can handle. And it will make it look so small. Yeah, this small thing. Now this small thing. And there's nothing. He has not even done anything. One over one thousand of it. Then now this small thing you they talk. Now small thing. Come back tomorrow. I'll show you. As you step out. By the following day. Listen, forget about the false statistics, though. There are more billionaires in Anambra State alone than any part of this nation. Alone. For, don't be deceived by what they're telling you. Anambra State alone, there are more billionaires. And sometimes when you see them in Alaba, you would think that they are looking for a room. But if you know their network, you can faint. And many of them didn't go to school. But they just understand how to, the how to of business. The how to. That's why the business model that is studied from Africa today abroad is the Igbo apprenticeship business model. That's the business model that is studied from Africa abroad in some very powerful institutions. Why? Wow. It has raised far more millionaires and multi-billionaires than any other type. Now, go to school, read. It has value. Because one of the challenges with that model also is that because there's no much emphasis in um, in um, personal development, right? The, the challenge there is that the wealth uh, sometimes is not transgenerational. It doesn't move past certain generation. Why? Because there is not enough skill to make it so. But in terms of making the money, that business model is, it, it delivers it into your hands. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. So, God is raising saviors. God is raising men and women that his intention is to equip you. Equip you, prepare you for the forthcoming famine. What we are seeing right now is preparation for famine. It's not famine. Because you can still buy food. You can anything, there's nothing you want to buy, you can't buy. Just have the money. Just have the money. There are people that are dying, for, dying of hunger. You are not among them, right? Okay. God wants you to be the one helping them. That you have enough food in your storehouse. 
Now, people will be queuing in your house, not in church, oh, in your house. As a church, we did that during the COVID. An average of 100, 150 people were queued here every single day for a long time. And they were being well fed. Well fed. Well fed. Every single day. But I'm talking about a time will come when the need will be so much. One church can't handle it. Individuals. I'll be calling Mr. Chairman, how is the feeding process going on in your house? And you, you say, uh, uh, Pastor, we, we fed like 1,000 yesterday. Amen. And then my husband and I have arranged for another truck of chicken. So, I didn't hear an amen. amen. So God is preparing you now for it. And it's a mindset. He has to first of all change the way you are thinking. Because for most of us, the way we are thinking presently cannot accommodate what God is saying or what God wants to do. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. There are some, there are certain things you should stop talking about. Because it reinforces scarcity. And scarcity, first of all, is a mindset. If, it, if, it, if there's no scarcity up here, what about this scarcity you are experiencing will fizzle out after a while. But if it doesn't fizzle out here, it will be perpetuated. God said in Genesis 11, verse 6, say there is nothing they have imagined that they will not be able to accomplish. There is nothing. Solomon said in his wisdom, he said, as a man thinketh. Ah, Nobody is more qualified to come to that conclusion than the wealthiest man that ever lived. Wealthiest man. The wealthiest man that ever lived is telling you that you are the sum total of the way you think. More like, God may have blessed me, but if I was thinking differently, I would have lost all the wealth. Do you know that people lose even the blessings? Yeah. God gives people things and they lose it. You don't know. Start the scripture. Start the scripture. That's why scripture says, do not be afraid of your fear. Do not fear their fear. Faith is a substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Romans 4 verse 17. Even God who calls the things that be not as though they were. More like saying, if God, with all his mightiness, and all the reputation he has to protect, in quote, can dare to call the things that be not as though they were. How much less you? Many of us are afraid to call the things that be not as though they were. We only want to call the things that are as they are. And yet you want to see something different. So God says to Abraham, you have become the father of nations. And he was still expecting they say, change your name from Abraham to Abraham, father of nations. Why? Because that is the order. First, he exists in the immaterial, and then afterwards, the material. If he doesn't exist in the immaterial, he can never become material. Never. Can never become material. You know how much oxygen costs? How many of you have been on oxygen before? Nobody? Okay, that's good. How many of you have people who have been on oxygen? You know how much oxygen costs? It's expensive. And yet you have it in abundance. If you want to take 10 times more than you are taking right now, you can take just... No scarcity. 
Glory to Jesus. Everything God has given he freely gives in abundance. No scarcity. Jesus never operated with a scarcity mentality. That's why the fact that he didn't, you know, um, you can't say he was carrying money all around. When the need arose, the supply was available. He was ministering to thousands of people and then suddenly he realized that they needed to be fed. He asked them, what do you have? Because what you have is more than enough for God to give you what you need. But we are always looking down on what we have. We are always thinking, I don't have enough, I don't have, I don't have. Jesus said, what do you have? And they said to him, like the average person, Master, we don't have any. I mean, it's just one, lo one two loaves of bread and five, five pieces of fish. What is that? You just say, bring it. Tell everybody to sit down. They must have been thinking, what was this man? What was he up to? Tell everybody to sit down. We're going to. How? Everybody's going to take a bite. 5,000 men. We're going to take a bite from two pieces of fish. About loaves of bread. How is that? How? Tell them to sit down. Tell them to relax. Tell them to relax. Sit down. Arrange themselves. That's faith. That's faith. Faith calls the things that be not as though they were. That's faith. And then he took, in quotes, the little and inconsequential. The Bible say, he gave thanks. He didn't say, God, you brought these 5,000 people. Look at what you are giving me. Those two loaves of bread and five pieces of fish. Is that enough? Even you said, think come. You know, that's what many of us that's what we do. Many, many times in our words and our thoughts, we judge God to be unfaithful. And God can never be unfaithful. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. What, what do you do with your own two pieces of, of fish and five loaves of bread? What do you do with it? Many times we look down on it. We complain, and that's why it, diminishes diminishes but Jesus took it he gave thanks he gave thanks Lord I thank you thank you for what you have given me I'm grateful I'm grateful one thousand dollars in my pocket Lord I'm grateful thank you thank you for what you have given me one smoking car, Lord, I thank you. Thank you for all you are giving me. One job that doesn't look like it is befitting to me, Lord, I'm grateful. Lord, I'm grateful. Lord, I'm grateful. Been waiting for an opportunity for so long and then now gave me something that is far beneath my status. Thank you. Lord, I'm grateful. Thank you. Thank you. Lord, I'm grateful. Why? The Bible said, do not despise the days of little beginning. Don't despise it. Because once you despise it, you become unqualified for something better. You disqualify yourself. So Jesus took the bread. What will you do in that circumstance? What, what have you been doing in similar circumstances? When you take the bread and you look at it in, this, in the light of the, of the multitude you have to feed. Or you take in quote the solution. You look at it in the light of the problem. Massive. What do you do? How do you react? You complain to your mama. Or do you say thank you? Thank you for this. Lord, I'm grateful. 
thank you. And Jesus took it. He gave thanks. The next thing was that he broke the bread. Wow. He broke the bread. And as he broke the bread, it began to multiply. As he broke, multiply. Broke. I mean, you don't know what happened. As he was breaking, it was increasing. It was breaking. Up. So he just kept breaking, 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 breaking. It was multiplying. That's what happened. It was multiplying. As it was breaking, it was multiplying. It was multiplying. Whoa, God was in motion. And it was breaking. It was multiplying. It was multiplying. But first of all, he needed to believe. He needed to give thanks. And then he needed to act out his faith by breaking it. By breaking it. By breaking it. As it was breaking, it was multiplying. You see, without faith, you can't do much with God and for God. Ah, nobody does great things for God with his own resources. No one. No one. No one does great things with God and for God with his own resources. The greatest resource that God has given us is the resource of faith. 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 And no one can have it for you. <laughs> no one can have it for you. Ah, my God, don't go sad. We had, we, we had a strange testimony on Wednesday. How many of you are here on Wednesday? Strange. Strange testimony. Go off time. I'll have said go and give it, but maybe next week Sunday. Straight testimony. Somebody get in a house without money. A student, for that matter. And not a slum in a posh place. Some of you have been saving all for all eternity. The kind of house God wants to give is. Some of you are going to live in places where no family member of yours have lived in. And it is not because of you. It's so that God will be honored and glorified. So that because there are some people you have preached to that don't believe in your God. But when you bring them there, all you hear them say is that God is real. God is real. God is real. God is real. You see, let me tell you, there is a dimension of wealth that shows the mouth of critics. That dimension of wealth, you can't assess it without faith. And what is faith? Faith is not a spectacular. No. You don't even pray and beg God for faith. No. Faith is accessible to all. The Bible faith that says that faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing by the word of God. So if you want your faith to grow so fast in a short time, all you need to do is to increase your hearing and assimilation. For instance, a man who has a big pot belly and then he wants to go for an interview where you are expected to have a trim stomach. That kind of man is not going to walk out like a normal person. Do you understand? The Interview is in a month's time. He has to go to the gym in the morning, in the afternoon, and at night. He will change his diet. No more apple. At 5 p.m., he has had his last meal. Why others, 
while he's about to change gear in sleep, move from level two to level three in his sleep, the next thing he, the alarm rings. He cannot quench the alarm. He will have to get up, go out. Why? He's time bound. He's time bound. He's time bound. And then somebody suddenly sees him on interview day. He appears stream. What kind of miracle is this? It's not a miracle. It's a miracle of hard work. It's a miracle of intentionality. Let me, let me advise you. If you have mass exam, don't read chemistry. Leave it there. Don't worry. May God give you understanding. You see, only very mature, sensitive people. If you understand what I'm saying, let me see your hand up. The interpretation, the interpretation. If you understand the interpretation, let me see your hand up. I, I told you, only <laughs> if you have mass exam, if you read chemistry, you will fail. But chemistry is good. A chemistry exam is for another time. The exam you have now is maths. Makatokos kasubanika lengrado sabani vranisho. The reason why many fail in life is because they do not discern times and season. They do not discern times and seasons. There is a time for everything. Something may be good, but it may not be his time. In all you're getting in this season, get wisdom. And in addition to wisdom, get faith. Somebody with me? If you have maths exam. Read maths. Somebody here? Yes, you have maths exam. There are certain issues that you cannot solve at your faith level. Stand to your feet. It's, I've, I've also learned that there are some things you have to hold back um, so that people can exercise their thinking faculties and their spiritual faculties. <laughs> I can't be cooking for you and then be spoon feeding you all the time. Sometimes I will have to cook for you and leave it on the table. If you are hungry, wave your hands and bless the name of Jesus. 